Hello and welcome to Sharp HR Career Corner with Karen Sharp Price. This podcast will inform and inspire you in your quest to find the right career path. If you're just starting out, looking to make a change in your field, or transitioning into a new career, then this podcast is for you. We'll be sharing tips and providing resources on topics such as writing resumes, interviewing, using LinkedIn, and networking. We will take a look at different careers, companies, and opportunities. You will hear success stories from professionals in all career paths, and so much more. You will leave this podcast with three key takeaways that you can easily put into practice. Enjoy! Welcome to Sharp HR Career Corner. I'm Karen Sharp Price. Today, we're going to talk to David Weiner about retiring from the Army and getting back into the civilian workforce and how that transition worked for him. Hi, David. So happy that you could be on the podcast today. Good morning, Karen. Thank you so much for uh, the invitation. And it's my pleasure to uh, be part of this uh, podcast. Thank you. So, so let's, you know, let's start talking about when you began and kind of start there and we'll work our way forward to where you are today. But what's interesting is, is that you graduated from Canisius College with an accounting degree. At that time, what were you hoping to do with the accounting degree? Well, Karen, I have to uh, go a little back in time uh, to my uh, kind of uh, generation, gener- generational period. Um, you know, when I was growing up, uh, typically, um, you always followed in the footsteps of your father and the career that, uh, that he had chosen. Um, he was an accountant with a laundry firm back in the Catskills where I grew up and, um, he had worked for the same company, uh, for 37 years, um, as an accountant. So, uh, the footsteps that typically you took back then uh your education and your career kind of uh mirrored you know what your father did at that time Mm -hmm. okay so it was always kind of instilled with me when i was in high school to you know pursue um uh, an accounting uh degree and become an accountant uh, eventually um when I did uh, graduate, you know, initially I had uh, goals of, you know, pursuing to get to become a certified professional accountant, a CPA. Okay. Uh, but after, um, I think after my first job as an internal auditor with uh, Marine Mid- Midland Bank, um, which eventually became HSBC, I kind of lost interest oh. um, in the career field. And uh, I kind of uh, switched uh, career paths at that time. Uh, so that was the initial journey, you know, just trying to follow my father's footsteps and and pursue, a, a, you know, a, a degree in his uh, career field. You know, it's it's interesting because the generations, are, there's so many of them right now out there, out in the workforce. But for the groups that, you know, our parents, our grandparents, they they didn't have as many choices as kids do today. And in some ways, I think that, that it's actually easier because when when you got to college and you had to figure out what you wanted to do, you had maybe one or two and, you, and then you chose and then that's the route that you went. And nowadays, there's just so many things and not only what's out there, but whatever is in your imagination, you can pretty much create your own path. And so I think that that's why nowadays kids have such a hard time trying to figure out what they want to do um, because because they start looking at and watching even YouTube videos of people doing different things, thinking, oh, I could do that someday. Um, and it makes it really difficult. So so during your path, um, some of the industries that you worked in, you were in banking and, and IT, what at what point were you thinking about the army reserves where did that fall into to your career path well i think looking back karen on uh, you know the big spikes of um, when individuals have enlisted into the armed for- forces you know uh, anything um after you know the vietnam war um i think it's like kind of a call to patriotic duty 
Um, at that time, when I did enlist in 91, we were in the midst of uh, uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom. Uh, so that was kind of a big impetus for me um, at that point, you know, and I was I, I came in I came in late into the army. I was already, um, you know, 30 years old huh. uh, with, uh, uh, you know, post college, um, you know, seven years. Um, uh, but I was looking at that point in time. Obviously, it was a call to duty on. Um, I didn't want to do the army. Um, full time. Um, I, I joined mostly uh, for, you know, to um, have a supplemental paycheck uh, to serve the country. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, the big draw at that point in time was, uh, was the student loan repayment mm -hmm. program that the Army had. And of course, I had a lot of debt, yeah. uh, college uh, loans from from Canisius. Um, so that was, you know, a good incentive at that point uh, uh, to join. And uh, my initial intentions were only to stay in, you know, for that, uh, you know, that six year period and then go into an inactive status for the last two years. Um, but here we are, you know, 30 years later, uh, you know, retiring out. Um, but I, I just I, I really enjoyed the camaraderie. Um, the esprit de corps, the, um, the the teamwork that you that you kind of found in the army, and then obviously that eventually led me to going on active duty in two thousand five. Did you know um, people, you know, when you were in college, or or did somebody in your family were was somebody in your family in it? Just to have the idea, because it sounds like it was maybe there all the time. But then at 30, you decided that that was time to, to jump in. Um, I, like, was there some influence? Well, I had always considered, you know, the ROTC program, you know, when I was in college. But um, I ended up actually uh, rowing for, oh. uh, for Canisius College. And that kind of sidetracked me from maybe pursuing, uh, the, you know, the ROTC program. And like I said, it wasn't until you know, seven years after I had uh, actually graduated, yeah. um, you know, from college, uh, that I did end up uh, in, uh, enlisting. Um, so, you know, I was always surrounded. Um, I, I knew a number of, uh, of students at Canisius that were uh, in the ROTC program and who had subsequently had a very long tenured uh, service, hmm. uh, whether it was the Marine Corps or the Navy. Um, but I, I kind of sat out on the sideline, you know, kind of waiting for the right uh, for the right time. And like I said, during you know that year, uh, we were in the midst of you know a conflict in in, in Iraq. And during you know those two campaigns, I, I know basically once I had completed um, you know basic training in uh, AIT at Fort Jackson, um, a lot of those uh, soldiers that I went to basic training with were already on their way to Iraq. You know? Oh, wow. But uh, it wasn't my calling because of my uh, my occupation in the in the army huh. you know, is more. It was along the lines of uh, human resources uh, admin. So so let's talk about your career um, in the army. So what what did you do um, after you began that process? What what was those 30 years? What did you do in the army? Uh, Karen, I originally uh, had enlisted um, uh, because I, I had a degree um, uh, that bumped me up in rank as soon as I enlisted into the Army. So I came in um, as an E-4, and uh, I progressed um, over the years, and especially when I um, is, uh, switched my uh, MOS to retention and transition, um, there was, it was kind of top-heavy, you know, senior enlisted. So uh, that definitely gave me an advantage of of getting promoted fairly quickly, mm -hmm. and I spent, you know, two thirds of my military career reserve and active duty um, in retention and recruiting, uh, which primarily were in the ranks of uh, Sergeant First Class, you know, through Sergeant Major, E7 through E9. So, uh, I you know I I did all the right things over the years. 
Uh, I was always where I was supposed to be, when I was supposed to be. Um, I always completed all my um, Army education requirements. And uh, I got promoted to my last rank back in uh, 2012, which is the rank that I held um, until I retired. Okay. And then what is that process? Um, do you, at, at what point do you get to decide that it's time for your retirement? Do they tell you or do you tell them? <laughs> well, I, I'm in a unique situation because like I said, when I, you know, I came in at, at 30, um, I, I was fortunately able to stay right up to basically the mandatory retirement age of 60. Okay. okay? And as it turned out, uh, that was a blessing in disguise uh, because if I had retired, you know, a year earlier in 2020, that would have been right around the time of the start of the COVID-19, uh, you know, pandemic. Yeah. So I was very fortunate that the, you know, the army allowed me to stay uh, r kind of right to the, you know, bitter end, you know. Right, right. Wow. Okay. So we're going to take a little break um, right now and, and try to get to know you a little bit better, a little bit faster. I'm going to ask you 10 questions um, and you just respond with whatever pops into your head. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fire away. <laughs> so virtual or in person, which do you prefer? In person, Karen. Okay. Social media of choice. Uh, Facebook. Okay. Um, a hobby or interest that you have outside of your career? Uh, crossword puzzles. Ah. Um, Jumble. Jumble, okay. <laughs> Jumble. <laughs> um, books or music? Music. Favorite place that you've traveled to? Sedona, Arizona. Ooh, okay. Phone call or email? Phone call. Favorite food? Uh, seafood. Ah, and your favorite restaurant? Left Bank. Ah, okay. And then the last question, well, actually I have two more. Um, what is the one thing that you have learned while being in the Army that will stick with you forever? Uh, just the uh, integrity uh, aspect. Um, you know, the camaraderie, uh, the esprit de corps, the teamwork um, that's fostered, you know, in the Army. Okay. I, I would say uh, those are uh, probably the top four that would uh, stick with me, you know, for the rest of my life. Okay. And I think I know this answer, but morning or night person? Morning. <laughs> <laughs> Emphatically. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks for playing along. Um, now we're going to return to our regular questions. So um, this past year, you, you decided to retire from the Army. What was going through your mind about life after retirement? Did you, were you thinking, all right, you know, I've put my 30 years in. I just want to sit back and retire. Um, or was there this feeling that you wanted to still contribute? Um, so what was going through your mind as you navigated all of that? Uh, Karen, uh, I, there was definitely some, you know, anxiety uh, because, you know, uh, I was out of the um, civilian sector uh, for such a long period of time. And uh, the whole uh, jobs process had definitely changed uh, dramatically. Um, but I think that the biggest reason was um, I, I still definitely wanted to work. Um, you know, I, I think the main goal um, was to try to um, fund my uh, my three sons' education because um, I, I really strongly feel that uh, uh, they shouldn't have any debt. You know, um, once they've completed their education, and uh, I, I think that was a big driving force of of continuing to work. You know. Uh, post army uh, for sure so how did you figure out i mean because 30 years is is a long time how did you figure out what you exactly wanted to pursue on the other side um how did what kind what was what were some of the things going through your mind at that time 
Well, since I had basically served, you know, in the retention and recruiting field for, uh, you know, two thirds of my army career, um, I, I felt I would be a great fit, you know, for a sales or uh, marketing position because uh, technically, um, you know, the MOS that I held and, you know, for those, you know, 20 some odd years, basically we're, you know, the sales force for the army, you know, from a retention and recruiting standpoint. And uh, I, I felt that I would be a good fit for an organization um, you know, in a sales or marketing uh, capacity, because I, I really felt that that was my uh, yeah, strong suit. Okay. So what are some of the things that you did prior to officially retiring to prepare yourself for that transition? Because that, that's a, a, a pretty big transition. Your your life and everything that you were doing um you you were very organized and you knew what you needed to do now you're you're opening this door to a world that has <laughs> changed um mm -hmm. drastically in in 30 years and it's gone more technical um i'm sure that the some of the bigger differences prior to were you know paper resumes having conversations with people on the phone and now you find that everything's online and everything's digital. So that had to sort of be a little bit um, frustrating and, and scary because this whole new world of how to find a job, um, you know, there's no playbook out there to, to help you. So what, you know, were there things that you did prior to retiring or did you wait and then start the process? Oh, oh, Karen, uh, I was very fortunate, um, and um, the Army uh, basically provided me with a, a six-month period, which started in the, you know, fall of uh, 2020, uh, to basically, you know, transition from uh, Army, you know, to, uh, uh, to a civilian uh, career. Uh, the Army does a, a really fantastic job. Uh, they have an official program that's called the uh, SFL TAP, which is Soldier for Life uh, uh, Transition Assistance Program. And basically, they have uh, formalized classes um, that uh, basically guide you um, through the process. They start off with basically a finance uh, class, uh, so you know how to uh, uh, properly budget your, your, your uh, finances, you know, uh, post-Army. Um, another big segment of it is a uh, Department of uh, Labor um, uh, class uh, that's a, that's a, a two days in duration, uh, basically where they take your skill sets in the Army. They, they do this, what they refer to as an MOS conversion, that, that basically takes your uh, skill sets in the Army and, and converts it to the uh, most appropriate career fields, you know, in the civilian sector. Okay. Um, and um, during this, um, during this SFL TAP process, uh, like I said, which, which started actually uh, last uh, summer, 2020, uh, it gave me a great opportunity to also uh, network um, with some other uh, senior uh, enlisted personnel that were also retiring. Um, so it was a, a great uh, networking uh, program. But uh, overall, uh, it really, really helped me um, since things have so drastically changed. Um, it, it definitely helped me, you know, with my uh, transition. And I, I'm very thankful that I was afforded that opportunity, you know, to take advantage of uh, of this army program. So is that program available for anyone that's retiring now? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Um, yeah, basically, uh, even if you've only served, you know, three or four or five years on active duty, this, um, this transition assistance program is also available. And it's, it's basically uh, mandatory okay. required that you have to start the process out, you know, a year from when you're transitioning out of the army. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, because um, I, I would think that just, you know, when you decide to retire, not knowing where to begin, 
is probably the hardest part. You know, you know, there's so many moving parts to this process that um, I think that's great that they they afford you that opportunity to sort of slowly understand what the other side is doing and how they're handling things and and looking at all that. And it's interesting that that they um, have a course on finance too to to make sure that you are prepared for all of that. So so that's great. Um, when you're looking back at, at what you did, um, what do you think were the steps that worked? So you went to the classes that really helped you. So what worked and what obstacles do you think that you found along the way? And, and then how did you navigate all of that afterwards? Uh, well, I think the, the biggest ob- obstacle was was you know COVID nineteen uh, you know with the shrinking uh, drive market and uh, the, the shrinking of available uh, positions uh, to um, apply for, um, but like I had mentioned earlier, uh, I was very fortunate that I did stay on active duty until twenty twenty one, and kind of wrote wrote out the storm, yeah. uh, you know pretty much. Um, I think another um, another obstacle was uh, the reception that I would get from a potential employer um, after being in the army uh, for so long. And uh, one of the things I tried to do was to try to cut down on the army lingo. You know, when I was you know speaking with prospective employers, you know, cutting down on the acronyms and and all that, uh, all that, um, language, you know, um, that's hard to do though, because I mean, it, for being in there for 30 years, it's a part of you. I mean, it just kind of flows out. You're not really thinking about how you're saying yeah. something. It's just, it's you, it's you. So that, that has to be very difficult to, to try to figure out what their lingo is. Um, and not only that, what, 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 just think about it. Um, you know, this, the whole millennial thing, so, so you don't just have the lingo of the workforce, but now you've got a lingo of a different generation which, on top of that, which is really out there. And, and the way that they communicate, um, I think, you know, when I asked you questions about, you know, in-person and, and virtual and phone call and email, those sometimes are generational things because I know with my own kids, um, they do not talk on the phone with their friends. It's only texting. And, mm-hmm. and you lose, you lose something with that. You, you, you lose the communication, you, you lose the emotional intelligence of the feel of the conversation and all of that. So, so you're coming out of an organization where communication is, is very strong because you're in person and you're communicating and you're going into a world where, you know, they're using texting and all these other things. Um, just to add on to more obstacles that you had to face, but you you hit it head on. I mean, you did not miss a beat. You kept going. Um, what what kept you focused? Was it was it this training from the army that that kept you on target of what you were going to do? Because you you know you were in the middle of a pandemic. You were retiring out after thirty years. You were entering into a new world of of how things happen. But none of that deterred you. You you were very strong in knowing what you were going to go for, and you kept doing it. So, how does that work? How, how, you know, because I think a lot of people listening right now, they could use that help, whether they're they were retiring out or not from the army. People who are transitioning into a new career or into um, just a new job, that silence that you hear when you are trying to um, get your foot out there and and talk to people, when you send your applications out and you don't hear a word, when when you send out a number of them and you get no reply back, um, that's hitting everybody. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. How do you, how did you deal with that? How did you cope with all of that? I I think it had uh, mostly to do with just the, 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 the discipline to keep um, after it, um, also the um, uh, being remaining um, uh, very persistent, you know, um, you know, setting 
daily goals like for instance i you know i want to make contact with x number of employers today you know and i i wouldn't close out the day and in, 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 until i did that so wow. uh, i think a strong work ethic you know and, and just the uh, staying focused and and uh remaining resilient too you know which is a big thing that i kind of learned in the army you know just that resilience factor um and and also being kind of uh what i call uh mentally agile you know to be able to navigate you know um but i i think mostly you know just discipline and 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 being persistent you know okay and and also you know knowing that um <laughs> there's a lot of other individuals counting on me you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that does help <laughs> that helps motivate you um so at the end of, of the podcast, um, I asked my guests to give three pieces of advice. What advice would you give those that are that are about to retire out of the armed forces and that are still interested in contributing to society in a career? What what would you tell them that you've learned through that process that might help them? Um, I, I would say uh, the, the the biggest aspect, Karen. Um, is I would say network, network, network. Um, and it, it was kind of unique that even uh, for the organization, uh, the Army organization, during that SFL TAP process, um, during those Department of Labor um, uh, classes that I had, um, the facilitator, um, it, it was amazing how it seemed like every uh, half hour, hour, th that word would come out of her mouth, you know? <laughs> And, you know, networking, 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 not as much um, what you know, but who you know. Yep. So I, I had to establish that, that, um, that net, that network, you know, um, uh, which was tough because, you know, after, you know, being out of the civilian sector for so many years, you know, um, that was a kind of difficult process to have to try to develop that that network again you know mm -hmm. but some of the individuals that i worked with you know it, it was it was so long had, had so much time had transpired from my last contact with them you know so i had started with with some of those senior enlisted um that that went through the the sfl tap pro, um, program with me at that time which was very helpful too you know um communicating and networking with two, you know, senior uh, enlisted, you know, that was, that worked out real well. Okay. Um, I would say, secondly, is start early and often. Um, start the process as soon as, you know, as soon as you can start it. And like I said, I was very fortunate to be able to, you know, start that process six to nine months from when I actually came off of active duty and then subsequently retired. Um, I would say another uh, suggestion recommendation is also is to make sure that you convert your army skill set to the civilian skill set and, and try to uh, mirror um, try to take uh, take all your your accomplishments and every all your experiences you know from uh, from the um, from the military uh -huh. and, and and convert that uh, over so you have a really uh, good idea of the uh, industries that you should um, that you should pursue okay now you started early on before you you really you know needed to but from the time that you officially retired how long did it take you to find your current position five weeks <laughs> So that's that's amazing. So a lot of a lot of people out there might think, you know, that this might have taken you six months to a year to to have achieved what you did. Um, but I think that that advice that you just gave to network, 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 and then to start as early as you can, actually helped you in that process because you were already running before the clock started, and then when you really did start focusing those five weeks you were able to find something and find something that you really love to do now like it's this is something that you really enjoy doing which i think is 
the most important thing of, of all of this is to find something, not just a job, not just a, a career that you know you want to finish out your career with, but something that you just really thoroughly enjoy because that helps you on Sunday nights when you're thinking about you know the start of Mondays and on during the week keeps you going it keeps you excited about what you're doing so I'm, I'm thrilled that you were able to find something that um, you absolutely you know love to do and that you were able to achieve that in in record I mean honestly in record time we were we're still in the pandemic but you were still really in the thick of the pandemic when you were able to do that. So that is a huge, huge achievement. And I hope that you understand that, um, what you achieved, because that's, that's amazing. There are people out there that have been laid off since the beginning of the pandemic and are still laid off. So I'm hoping that maybe, you know, what you have just shared with us um, will help them to just stay on course. I mean, that's, that's the big thing is stay on course, keep networking, keep having those conversations, Join some groups um, that can help, not just with um, opening up some doors, but people who are out there doing what you're doing understand the obstacles that you're facing and can have those conversations with you. And I think that also helps you feel better through that process as well, knowing that you aren't the only one out there, you know, that's facing all these things. So I'm thrilled that that it all worked out for you. And that you're happy. <laughs> so, so thank you so much for spending time today um, on Sharp HR Career Corner. Um, I love to hear your story. I know that there's a lot of people out there that are retiring out of the military and they have to go through that process. And I think it's important for them to hear how someone, you know, did the work, um, went just currently went through the process and it all worked out for you. Um, so I think that that's a great story for, for others to, to hear about. So thank you for, for being on today. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate the uh, invitation and uh, I really enjoyed uh, the segment of uh, sharing my uh, experience with other, you know, individuals uh, that uh, might be in the same boat. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are. And, and, you know, I think one of the things that it's important is, you know, you're not alone. There's other people that have been out there that have done it um, and done it successfully. And I think that that helps, uh, um, helps greatly. So thank, thank you everyone for listening to Sharp HR Career Corner. Um, if you're looking to make a change in your career, but you aren't sure where to start, contact Sharp Human Resources. We'd love to help you out. We can make the process a smooth transition for you. Go to sharphumanresources-buffalo.com for more information. If you enjoy listening to our podcast, I encourage you to download the podcast, leave a comment, and share with others you know. The more downloads and comments and likes our podcast receives, the better our ratings and the easier we can be found. So thank you in advance. Until next time, be kind, everyone. We need to show a lot more kindness in the world, and it starts with you and I. Thanks again for listening, and have a great day. 